Right, so I'm currently at home uh, and I've just booked a train ticket to go from Milton Keynes in the morning. So this is currently the night before. But tomorrow morning I've got a train book from Milton Keynes to Coventry, uh, which ain't too bad a journey. And the reason why I'm going to Coventry is, which you can see from the thumbnail probably, I'm going to buy an E46 3 Series Touring. And that is gonna be the base car for my E46 turbocharged M3 Touring project. Is that right if I jump in the front, yeah? There it is then, <laughs> My f so it's a BMW 325i. Uh, let's go for a little wander around the back. There we go, look, 325i. It is obviously a Touring. Um, let's go see what it starts at. Tires are a bit naughty. It is an 04 plate car. That's really of importance to me and I'll explain why in a sec. Um, but yeah, it's quite a nice car actually. It's gonna be a bit of a shame to break it. Roof rails, I think they're gonna be coming off. Um, it is a Sport as well. Oh, just get in there. They were known as a sport back then, not really an M sport. I don't know why, although they do have M badges everywhere. Full leather, it's cream leather, a bit worn out. It's done, uh, it's done 150,000 miles. And what else can I say? Manual gearbox, that was obviously important for me. And uh, that's pretty much it. Under the bonnet, obviously a 325 is that random car. Just see that in the taxi actually. 325 is a six cylinder engine, which is spot on for me. So all the mounting points should be in uh, the same place or a very similar place to what the N54 M3 engine is. So we'll be able to just pull that out, stick the new engine in, just as easy as that. And uh, yeah, it'd be an easier task uh, than a four cylinder engine. What else did I want to say about it? That's pretty much it. It's in, I think, sapphire black, which is um, a color they didn't do um, on the M, well, tell a lie, the common black colour on the M3s was carbon black, but this is obviously sapphire black, which is actually a really nice colour. Um, I'm a bit undecided what colour to go for at the minute, but we'll again talk about that on the drive home. Um, well, I think what I'll do is um, spin that round. That's better. I think what I'll do is I'll leave it as that for now. Let me just show you what it sounds like. <laughs> this is it. It's all right, isn't it? It's all right, mate. Um, bit of a, I don't know, it ain't an old shed. It's a bit worn out, but it has done, like I say, 152,000 miles. 
but it's actually in the right little car so uh i'm hoping it drives all right it's only got to get me back to uh binger in milton Keynes, so i'm not even bothered if it don't drive all right it's just like it's got quite an easy little sale here to be fair uh but what i'll do is i'm gonna go pay for it because i don't pay for it yet and we'll get on the roads and talk a bit more about the plans with this car and also why i bought this car and also i want to apologize for taking so long to find the car it had to be right i couldn't just mess around and try and buy the wrong car this is going to be the m3 touring this has to be the right car and this is definitely the right one so um yeah let me go pay for it and we'll get on the road all right that's it sand labs all set up just over an hour just now over an hour drive home let's get that window up Heated seats, get the heated seat on, it's a bit chilly out there today. Um, <laughs> this is all right. The funny thing is like, the seat looks a bit naughty actually. Uh, back when me and Leon started selling cars, we used to sell a lot of, switch that front camera on, a lot of E46s in general, like three series diesels, like 320 CDs, um, estates, obviously a lot of M3s as well. And they're actually really good cars. So um, yeah, it's quite a, <laughs> I don't know, I'm quite happy to be back in the driver's seat a bit. So it's up for 1500 quid, and I give him a thousand pounds for it. So it's a bit of, a, bit of a deal. Um, he was happy though. I, mean, I, said, I just said to him just there as I left, I said, did you earn money on it? He's like, yeah, yeah, I still earn on it. It's like wicked. So uh, everyone's happy. And it's quite good him selling a car to another trader on trade terms because if this car breaks on the way home which it might well do that's my problem not his let me go mate come on guys um and that's the crack with a trade sale had i paid 1500 quid for it um thank you sir oh had i paid 1500 quid for it i would have got a warranty in like usual dealer facilities but obviously i don't want none of that because this car's getting pulled apart and used as a donor car for i've gone the wrong way just look down at my sat nav all the way around that's it it's got a speaker in the boot if someone wants to give me a bit of petrol money for my speaker collection from bing car let me know uh let's <laughs> i may as well throw that in there but let's talk about the car itself right now it has taken me a long time to find this car because i was quite particular about what I wanted and when I say particular um, let me explain the things that were, that were important to me I was going to go Three left there Turn left onto head lane. keep going the wrong way the the things that were important to me were obviously the fact that I had a six cylinder engine under the bonnet right obviously like I mentioned just now just so we can it's easier to get the new engine under the bonnet uh, manual gearbox absolutely must we could have bought an auto and converted it but it's just more work which is unnecessary right um what else did i want obviously it had to be in a state i wanted black carpets this has got cream inter interior but it's got black carpets so um that's important i did want one with a sunroof and now a lot of people are probably wondering why calvin you wanted one with a sunroof why have you bought one without a sunroof now the reason why i bought a car without a sunroof i just looked up then and thought <laughs> I thought I was going to look up to a sunroof. There is definitely no sunroof there. Um, the reason why I bought one without a sunroof is because I read an article online and it was eight reasons why not to buy a sunroof. And sunroofs add about 40 or 50 kilos in weight to your car, right? As much as I love a sunroof, don't get me wrong, I love a car with a sunroof, but weight, um, you know, it is an important factor when you're trying to get performance out of a car right secondly they reduce the strength in the body of the car so by cutting a big hole in that roof now obviously you're going to reduce structural strength which makes sense but in the summer when i'm cruising down the road giving it large with my tunes on i want to be able to open a sunroof but on this particular car that ain't going to happen because we're going for performance we're going for speed so it was important that it was a rigid car as such all right so also i would love to skin the roof in carbon i don't know if that's going to happen but that would be amazing if anyone does carbon fiber skinning get in contact with me please because i would love to do that i'd also love to do some carbon fiber bits in here because carbon fiber is probably like personally my favorite material on the planet so um 
The plan for the car, oh finally! The one thing that was really important to me with this car, this is the most important thing that, that really mattered to me, was the fact that this car's date of registration was within a few weeks of the M3 donor car's date of registration. So they're exactly the same age. And strangely, I just found that was really important. So it's gonna, it's gonna be an 04 car. Obviously the plate is, oh, the coolant lights come on. All right, we need to stop at a petrol station and put water in it because we have a coolant light. Guys, we've got a coolant light. Seems to be all right. I could definitely do with finding a bit of water though to top it up. So the plan, that's what you all want to know. You want to know the plan for this car. So now I've finally got the estate car. This is obviously the final piece of the puzzle. Um, I think we're going to get both cars to VRS in Northampton and they're going to strip the pair of them. We're going to order the engine and gearbox parts so they can then begin rebuilding the engine and the gearbox. Once the cars are stripped, um, both cars are then going to go down to my friend Jason at Paintbox Space. Let's get in the right lane. Um, which is down in Essex near South End, and they're going to begin doing um, the paint work on the car. Like, as in, there's a lot of fabrication to be done. The front end's got to come off the M3 and go on this. I know that's not a straightforward process. A lot of people are going to be wondering why I've bought a facelift car. Um, this facelift front end is coming off the car. Obviously, an M3 is a pre facelift front end, so that's it's going to stay as a pre facelift front end. I want it looking like an original car. Um, so, yeah, that's all going to happen and we've got to decide on the color i haven't decided what color i want it yet like i said sapphire black is a rare color on an m3 um the csl's come in sapphire black it could stay as sapphire black but i wouldn't mind a color change let me know your thoughts because genuinely i've not decided fully what color i want to paint it all right so um yeah that's it i think i've covered everything i've got the car now finally the work will begin immediately, so make sure you subscribe to my channel to see the, the process or the, let, watch it unfold. It's gonna be an exciting journey. Um, if I break down on my journey home, I'll let you know. Then we just cut in here. So as you can probably see by the location that I'm at, I'm now off of the motorway. And the reason for that is because, um, let's go around this way. I'm gonna go in this direction. The reason that I'm not on the motorway anymore is because I've had to just get off and my journey has been cut short because remember at the beginning of this journey I mentioned um, the coolant light, yeah? Well the coolant light came on on my journey home, again, oh no sorry it was already on my on and I stopped so I thought I'd better check the coolant level just to make sure it's all good and um, I checked it all and then I filled it up because it was empty and the coolant light came on again so I filled it up again and it just keeps coming back on. Heating works, I've dipped the oil, checked the cat, oil cap, and there's no cream in the engine. Um, I can't see it leaking anywhere. I can't work out what's going on. Uh, the engine had temperature hasn't overheated. The needle sits bang in the middle, which is exactly where it should on an E46. So I can't see any problems. I've still got the coolant light on the dash and I know full well there is no coolant under the bonnet. So what I've done is I've got off the M1 I'm now going straight to VRS, the car's going straight there. I don't want to attempt to drive it home because um, I don't want to do the engineering damage because it's, it's a good engine, it all seems good, it works well. Don't want to do the engineering damage and I don't want to break down. You know, I'm good at breaking down. That's happened to me a lot over the past sort of few months. Don't want to break down again. Let's just make it a successful day and a successful journey. I'm going to get straight to VRS, all right? So the car is now going to go straight there. Work can begin immediately and um, yeah, man, we're going to have an E46 M3 Touring for, with a forged engine and a turbocharger coming very soon, all right? So obviously this whole do, this whole journey is gonna be documented, documented um, in videos for YouTube on my channel. So if you don't already subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Give me a follow on Instagram as well, at Calvin's Car Diary. And a massive shout out again to Will VRS because he was just like, yeah, Calvin, just drop it down. Don't worry, I've got space. Just drop it down, leave it with me. So a uh, massive shout out to him as well. And yeah, give the video a like, hit subscribe, and I'll see ya in my next video, all right? Bye. In the next episode of Calvin's Car Diary, a Porsche 944 and my Lotus Esprit go off to a classic car auction. Find out in the next video if we manage to sell any of them.